since I speak and teach on the topic of prioritizing your self-care, managing stress, and practicing healthy kind of habits, I've been practicing what I preach. If you're on my email list or in my crew, you know that I got hacked after releasing episode 51, so I pressed pause for a few weeks to make time to be kind to me. Not only to handle the hacked account and security issues with my VA, but also to take care of my own mental, emotional, physical, spiritual wellness, and my financial wellness to this month. Our guest Parker today has so much to share on this important topic, and she's going to inspire you to prioritize your financial wellness too. Sit back, relax, and let's share the currency of kindness today. It's time to be kind with Marley Q. Because the time to be kind to ourselves, each other, and the world is now. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for making time to be kind with me and our special guest, Parker, today. She's been witnessing my journey and a part of my journey for many years. She was in the audience at my TED Talk. She was one of the first supporting sponsors for our Mankind Summit, and she's one of the founding members of My Kind Crew Plus. I love this woman. You will too. She is the founder and CEO of Rise Up Bookkeeping, which is a powerhouse team of accounting and bookkeeping gurus who help business owners like me, take full control of their accounts and gain financial clarity. Making time to be kind with us today, please welcome Eileen Martinez. Hi, Marley. I'm so glad to be here today. Yay, welcome. Thank you so much for making time to be kind. I know you are a busy mama like me. You are a busy woman entrepreneur like me. And whoo, you are young too. And you are just, you know, you do this all with so much grace. So thank you for making this time to be kind with me and our partners sure. listening. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so I put all my guests on the spot. What does a Parker stand for? Just in case anyone listening is new to our world and they're like, a Parker, what is this? It's a Parker. Parker. A Parker's like you and me, someone who performs acts of random kindness. Yes, that is right. And you've been a part of my movement to spread kindness worldwide. You've been a Parker for many, many years. Can you take me and our listeners back to how we even met? Like, how did our worlds collide? Yes. So I think it was 2018 when you had your TED Talk, right? So around 2017, 2018, I actually started working with my mother-in-law and her accounting firm. That's when I got introduced to the whole bookkeeping world. I was actually on the pre-med track in college. Okay. You know, I was going to be a doctor, <laughs> but then I found the bookkeeping track. I realized that this is my passion through working with her. We made a lot of amazing connections. One of them was you, Marley, and she took me with her to your Ted talk. And honestly, it was the most inspiring thing I've ever been to. I don't think I had ever heard a Ted talk, like, you know, in person or anything like that before, um, that experience. And it was honestly amazing. And it's been crazy that since 2018 to now, I've been able to join the kind crew, like you said, support the Mankind Summit as a sponsor with my own business, Rise Up Bookkeeping. And through all of this, I've been able to, to hear your story multiple times <laughs> in different platforms. And every single time that I hear your story, it's that much more inspiring. Like I always pick up on an extra detail that I hadn't heard on before or something like that, you know, like, and I just love hearing your story. I love seeing how everything has evolved, how you went from, you know, doing the TED Talks and all of that stuff to dealing with COVID and now with this whole hack on LinkedIn, <laughs> you know, just you go through everything so gracefully and with so much kindness and you're truly an inspiration. And like I've told you before, like I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> I love that. That is so awesome. Thank you. You know, I'm super inspired by your share right now. So I'm receiving it because I have practiced receiving kindness. <laughs> so I'm fully receiving it. But I also want to mirror it back because you are an incredibly inspiring and driven young woman. I feel that you, like me, started like your path and your journey in entrepreneurship really young, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So it actually dates back to, I graduated in 2017 from high school. I'm 24 years old, by the way, <laughs> for those of you trying to do the math and figure out like, you know, she's young, but what, you know, what's going on here. So I graduated in 2017 from high school. I went to FIU, you know, pause up my alma mater. Um, whoop, whoop. I love it. Uh, so I was actually on the pre-med track. Like I had mentioned, you know, I grew up with the mentality of if you want to be successful, you have to be a doctor or a lawyer. I really loved math. Numbers were always my thing. So I went the doctor route, science, all of that. 
But of course, even though I was on a full ride with FIU, I still had to pay for, you know, all of the expenses, food, gas, phone, insurance, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? I started looking for a job and the easiest option was joining my mother-in-law and her accounting firm. And she's taught me pretty much, you know, like all the basics of bookkeeping, all of that stuff. And at first it was just like a way to make money. But after a few weeks, it's crazy. I can actually like, I can imagine the, the moment I was sitting down, I was doing a reconciliation. I was, you know, making sure everything was matching up in the software and it was super complicated. And I finally got that little green check mark that says, you know, you did it. Like you completed the reconciliation. And in that moment, it was just, it, it was just like a wave that came over me of like fulfillment and satisfaction because it wasn't just about getting the reconciliation to match to zero it was the fact that by doing this and doing all the other things i was doing in these clients books i was empowering them with the financial clarity that they needed to grow their businesses to make better business decisions to see what was profitable and what wasn't where they can save money where their money was going because that's something that a lot of people you know don't know what's happening with with it with their in their businesses so it was it was crazy to me i'm like this is what i want to do so I think it was that same week I went into my advisor's office. I'm like, I'm saying I'm changing my major. I'm not doing this pre-med thing anymore. I graduated with my bachelor's in 2019. I continued to do my master's with a specialization in data analytics right after. And I started Rise of Bookkeeping. And it's just, it's been up from there. It's been crazy. I love inspiring all of these different entrepreneurs that I've helped. It's been dozens of entrepreneurs with amazing success stories, all of them you know, being empowered by all of this financial knowledge. A lot of people don't realize how important it is to have their bookkeeping in order and have everything up to date and accurate so that they can they can grow in business. Listen, I am so guilty. So I'm going to go ahead and confess and our Parker's listening. You know, maybe this relates with you. As a business owner myself and as a nonprofit founder, I have not been the smartest uh, with focusing on my financial wellness at all. This has been a, a, an area of growth, of significant growth uh, throughout the years for me. And I'm really proud to feel that I am now on a path to profit. You know, I it's crazy to think back and now feel grateful for, you know, covid shutting down my business essentially in a day to feel grateful for that because it forced me to to start again and this time focus on profitability right because what i find and i'm sure you find this as well is that so many you know business owners nonprofit founders women entrepreneurs especially when we start a business or a nonprofit you jump in because you want to be of service you're in love with the cause like for you you're like sign me up I'm a bookkeeper I want to do this now right and you could just yeah. kind of like dive in to to the service to the doing of the thing without really even considering like like you said you know you started for the money so you start because you need to get paid so you're going to do the thing you love and you're going to get paid but you don't really pay attention to where that money's going, right? So you're just mm -hmm. like in the doing and the working and yeah, you're making money, but are you actually being profitable at the end of the year, right? So can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what you said, Marley. As entrepreneurs, especially women, we focus a lot on, you know, what feels right in the business. Like, what should I do? Because it feels right, it brings me joy. And it's one of the topics that I love to talk about because there's a stigma around money right now. Like there's a stigma that, and not just right now, just in general, where people don't want to talk about money. They want to hide how much they're making. They don't want to talk about their money goals. They think that it like makes them not humble, I guess. Like it makes them too like greedy, I guess, talking about money. Um, or there's the other thing where people are pretending that they have more money that they do. They buy all the nice cars and nice things. And it's something that we see a lot. And I want to change the stigma around that where it's like, hey, we can talk about money. We can talk about as entrepreneurs, yes, we're going into business to serve our, our customers, to elevate humanity, to, you know, provide our service to the world. But at the same time, we got to make a living, you know, like the two go hand, go hand in hand. It's not, it's not, inter it's not like one or the other, you can do both. So one of the things that I always say is how do you know if what you're doing is working, if you're not keeping track of it, if you're not reflecting. And it's one of the things that I love doing with you, Marley, at the Smartest Planning Workshop, because we set our goals, we see what we've been doing, we plan ahead of time, and then in a quarter, we come back and, and review again. And the same thing happens with the numbers. With the numbers, you know, like you can see, hey, I have this service that I love to provide. You know, it's, it brings me so much joy, it fuels my passion for my business. But sometimes you're going to notice that when you look at the numbers, that's the least profitable or not profitable at all service that you have. So 
you have some big decisions to make at that point. It's, you know, determining whether I want to continue this service and then see what's profitable, grow that so that it can make this service sustainable or realize that maybe it's not the right time right now for my business. I'm going to cut this off, revisit it later and do more income producing activities. So that's one of the things that I like to help people and guide them in that, because if you don't have the clear numbers, you don't know what's working. You just say, hey, money's coming in. Sometimes you're like, I have enough money to like pay my bills, so I'm fine. Or you like, I don't know where my money's going. And I have like, I'm struggling to make ends meet every month, but I'm making 10, I'm making five figures, you know, 10K, 10K, 20K months, but where's my money going? So that's where, that's the part where we kind of like see a lot of business owners struggling and where we come in to help where it's like, focus on where the profits are and go from there. And another thing is that we notice is that a lot of people are like, hey, but I don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> so they're like, I don't want to pay profitable. taxes. Who wants to pay taxes? Exactly. But it's definitely a mindset shift. You know, it's one of those things that I tell people, if you have to pay taxes, it's because you're making money. Like this is a good thing. The more taxes you have to pay, the more money it is that you're that you're making. So you want to focus on that instead of, oh, my God, they're taking my money. It's like, oh, my God, I'm making more. So that's what, another thing that I that I want to help these people understand because they're like, oh, I go to my tax professional and they help me so that I don't pay taxes. But then the investors come in and they don't want to invest in your business because it's not profitable. Or, you know, you want you need to apply for a loan because you want to go on this new venture and you want to grow your business and you can't because your business isn't profitable. And, you know, like that's a little bit of what we go into when we talk about profitability. Could you tell us the difference between bookkeeping and accounting, right? I mean, this might seem like a really like elementary 101 question, but really like what is the difference between having an accountant or a CPA and, you know, having a bookkeeper? It's, it's a very good question, not elementary. <laughs> so a CPA handles tax filings. So at the end of the year, your personal, your business tax return, a CPA is going to handle that. However, all throughout the year, you want to have a bookkeeper. You want to have a professional that's going to be maintaining your records on a month to month basis so that when you get to tax time, your accountant, all they have to do is grab your reports, grab the numbers and file your return. Yes, there are accountants that do bookkeeping. A lot of the times it's very generic categories. One of the things that I pride myself on is that we always like to offer high level and detailed level viewing so you can see everything that's going on, not from like a tax return perspective where everything's very general, like office supplies or travel, you know, like you get to see the breakdown of that. And a lot of the times accountants, and this isn't what they specify in, they charge a lot more to be able to get this done, especially in the crunch time of tax season. Mm -hmm. So I like to tell people that you want to have your numbers clear, not just for tax time, but throughout the year so that you can understand what's happening. And it goes back to that profitability. So you can see what's going on to make better business decisions. So the same way that, you know, you wouldn't go to, I don't know, a mechanic to treat your pets, you know, they're not vets, <laughs> two very different things. You want to keep everybody with their specialization separate. So you want your accountant to deal with your taxes. You want your bookkeeper to deal with your day-to-day -day finances. You want your social media manager to do with social media. You, know, you want a designated specialist for each of these different factors in your in your business to be able to scale. I'm, I'm with you. Thank you for answering that and not making me feel elementary about my question. Appreciate that. What are some other mindset shifts that you feel are, are foundational and important when we're talking about elevating our financial wellness? So, we talked about, you know, the money stigma, being able to to get away from that and be able to talk about money. We talked about the shift of like taxes and all of that stuff. And then the other shift, I guess it kind of go it kind of taps into both of them is that just because you're making a lot of money doesn't make you like, I don't know, greedy, stingy, like all of these negative words that people think of like, oh, no, having a lot of money makes me feel dirty. Like I'm not deserving of having all of this money. So I feel like that's a lot of things that we encounter too. And it's one of those things that a lot of people go into business, not for the money. Like they say, yeah, you know, I'm here to like make more money. That's my, my why or whatever. But one of the things that like my coach actually, Gigi Diaz is my coach. And I've learned this from her in the mindset thing is that if you keep going down into the root of why people started their business, the answer is always time. So, you know, it brings me to the acronym. I got time, you know, Marty, I you love think, it. You know, I, was you know, I got time. <laughs> You know, I was thinking about I got time. Of course. So I got time. And it's one of those things that it's like, at the end of the day, the most important things is health. You know, we were talking about wellness month, 
So if we don't have our health, our, bus our businesses aren't going to run. Our family, being able to spend quality time with our family, me, it's my husband, my, my son, my family, my mom, you know, all of these people. See, having the time to just self-care the way that you took a break now from the LinkedIn scandal <laughs> and you were able to take a month off and then come back and get back into it. All of these different things play a role. So at the end of the day, I guess the mindset shift that I would say is like, it's not all about work. I'm definitely one of those that, you know, I went into the business and, you know, newlywed <laughs> at the time I was living in California and I went into my business and it was all work, 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 work. You know, all I wanted to do was work in my business 24 seven. It was like three in the morning and I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Let me go like draft this email to go out at eight in the morning. You know, like all of these different things. And in reality, it's like without the time to take breaks, without the time to like allow for rest, for quality time to do those things. None of this at first is meaningful because, yeah, I'm relieving the stress of the business owners. I'm helping them out and it's very fulfilling. But my family also needs time with me, too. So it's that shift of it's not all about work. I have to set boundaries. I'm still going to make an impact. I'm still going to make money, but I have to stop, you know, at certain times I have to set my boundaries so that I can also fulfill the personal relationships that I have. It's not all about work. I love it. I love it. That's why you're part of my crew for you Parkers listening. In case you don't know, Kind Crew, Crew is an acronym for Quality Relationships Elevate Wellness. I believe that kindness is the number one driving factor of wellness and that quality relationships elevates wellness. So if you want to join our Kind Crew Plus, I know that every every single week I'm out here, you know, promoting that you join our Kind Crew, which is our private Facebook group. But I also have a paid membership community called Kind Crew Plus. Eileen is one of the founding members. So you can come hang out with us on the first Friday of every month. We take time to pause, do what we're talking about here, take care of our wellness, make sure that we're connecting to ourselves and each other, right? And elevating our wellness through the quality relationships, quality quality conversations, making sure that we're checking in on our goals and our progress, but also just emotionally, right? And socially, how are we doing? If you want to join our kind crew, you are so welcome to do so. You can check it out at marleyq.com. I will include the links in the show notes. And you brought up Miss Gigi Diaz, who was on our podcast, episode 36. I will also link that here in our show notes because that episode um, has a lot of gems on this topic of, you know, work, life balance, if you will. And, and, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. But back to you, because I know, actually, I want, I want to share this story because I know that your story with Gigi is awesome. And it goes back till you were like five or six years old and is the beautiful universe kind of brought you back. And now you're serving in a different capacity. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Of course. So one of the things that like basically what you were saying, five or six years old, I was in Gigi's dance studio. Gigi's Dance Academy. So basically I was learning flamenco and hip hop, you know, all of the little girl things. <laughs> and then I came back in my teen years to learn salsa because, you know, as a 15 year old with a quinceañera, you have to know how to dance salsa. <laughs> so we did that. It was an amazing experience. Besides learning all of this discipline, it gave me some life friends and, you know, friends whose kids my son is playing with now. We're having all the play dates. It's been amazing. And once I became a business owner and seeking powerful stages to speak at, I came across Gigi again. I spoke at Move, Breathe, Grow. It was an amazing experience. Um, and one of the things is that she has a nonprofit. It's the Seizing Happy Foundation. So it's helping BIPOC women achieve financial independence through entrepreneurship. And immediately I volunteered to be on her board. I offered my services for free, my bookkeeping services, along with workshops and event support. And honestly, it's just, it's one of those things that it fills my heart to go back and be able to give back to my community to give back to other women entrepreneurs. So I love that because Marley, I know that you have your nonprofit and it's all about spreading kindness and doing all of these things and being a part of another nonprofit as well, where I'm empowering women with my skill set of bookkeeping and financial wellness and all of that knowledge. Just, you know, it's one of the most fulfilling things that I'm doing right now. And it's important work. That's why I wanted to take a moment to pause and share that because I think more nonprofit organizations, especially startup and small nonprofits, should have a bookkeeper, an accountant, some support, someone on their board, on their team that's helping them to navigate their financial wellness, right? One of the things that I teach, I just shared a, a webinar 
last month called Path to Profit for Nonprofits. Me being on this nonprofit path <laughs> for the past 13 years has taught me that I've been doing it the absolute hardest way, that I needed to go through my own mindset shifts as it related to, to my money mindset, my, my relationship with money, my focus on profitability. Like I said, not just making money, but how much, how, how, are my efforts actually profitable? Right? And I learned, frankly, sadly, devastatingly, that they were not very profitable. All these amazing things. So I was like, all right, I've got to focus on increasing the profitability, right, of what I'm of what I'm doing, not just my for profit business, but my nonprofit as well. So I love that you're serving on the board of Seizing Happy Foundation and helping to, you know, empower nonprofit founders with a powerful money mindset, something that actually increases the financial wellness and the profitability of a nonprofit so that we can make the impact that we want to make. Because the truth of the matter is, if we're not financially well, the impact that we want to make is just simply not sustainable, right? If we are not financially well, we cannot make the impact that we want to make. And I learned that the hard way... <laughs> I'm still very much rising, right, from, from that burnout experience where I learned my lesson the hard way and coming back with a much better, not just mindset like we're talking about, but also strategy and systems and support in place to make sure that I'm paying attention to my financial wellness, right? Not just during tax time, but throughout the year. Yeah, I yeah. love it. <laughs> that's what we got to do. Are you proud of me? I've been doing this. I'm super proud of you. Like to see someone that's actually following like, the way that things should be done in their business to be able to be financially well and keep track of everything. Cause it's one of those things at the beginning, it might not be that you're profitable. Some businesses start off that way. You know, you have to continue pushing forward, but the only way to achieve that growth and scale, you know, past your entrepreneurial dreams is going to be by keeping track of these finances and ensuring that you're doing what's going to bring you money to continue doing those non-profitable things that bring you joy. So I'm offering two things for our listeners. I <laughs> love it. The first thing is the free resource. I have a PDF. It's six bookkeeping tasks you should be performing every week. So a lot of people will tell you, you know, I keep up with my bookkeeping quarterly or I do it monthly, which is more, more frequent. Like that's the more normal thing to do. But there's certain things that you can do on a weekly basis that are going to help you maintain your books more easily throughout the year. So this is a free resource. If you go to the homepage of my website, www.riseupbookkeeping.com. I'm sure Marley's going to link it in the show notes. Uh, you just sign up there and it's going to be emailed directly to you. And then the second thing that I'm offering, I'm offering listeners 25% off six months or more of cleanup bookkeeping services. So that's 25% off six months or more if you've fallen behind on bookkeeping services. We're already now in the second half of the year. It's time to get those books cleaned up and caught up to avoid a stressful tax season. So I also want to be able to do this to provide you with the clarity you need, like we've been talking about, to make better business decisions backed by accurate financial data so you can scale your business. And you can do that now in 2023 before we go into the tax season of 2024. I love it. That's super generous of you. Thank you for helping us all take care of our financial wellness and level up in this area. I think that it was so important uh, for me to be honest and authentic and talk about money and my financial wellness, which has not been well for over a decade of my business. This year, I'm actually celebrating 15 years as an entrepreneur, and I will vulnerably share the vast majority of that has not been profitable, even though I've made money, my business has made over six figures, but at the end, somehow, I, <laughs> we don't have money. So it wasn't until, you know, COVID, um, you know, kind of took away all of my business, uh, my event planning business at the time that I actually stopped and looked at what are, what am I doing? Where's all my money going and what are the actual profitable activities that I can focus more on, right? And make sure that I've got a strong financial, you know, footing. I put my nonprofit on the shelf for several years while I did this so that now, right, really it was just last year that I started raising some funds for Park Project and our nonprofit again, right? Slowly being able to, to bring that back. But it really took, back then it took burnout, <laughs> like a complete <laughs> burnout experience, right? And it took COVID for me to pause and look at it. So I finally learned my lesson, the importance of keeping an eye on your bookkeeping, uh, really relying on, on the support of professionals to handle this for me because it is not my area 
of expertise whatsoever. But that doesn't mean that I should dismiss it and disregard it and not pay attention to it, right? You need right. people in your crew to support you. So again, thanks for being part of my crew. Parker's listening. Eileen is now part of your crew. So reach out. Her links to connect will be in the show notes as well. And I guess before I let you go, I ask all of my guests to share with me a quote that inspires them. And I love the quote that you shared because it's probably my favorite quote of all time. And I'm just, it made me smile that we have this in common as well. What was that quote? No act of kindness, no matter how small is ever wasted. Ever. It is never, ever wasted. There's so much value in exchanging the currency of kindness. And I know we were here talking about money today, right? But I believe that the currency of kindness will make you richer than any amount of like ones and zeros and you know tangible currency ever will. I believe that the quality of your relationships at the end of the day is really what elevates your wellness. Even if you're going through a financial financially bad time, listen, you're listening to someone who's been through bankruptcy, foreclosure, like living be below the poverty line. Like I have been through some money challenges, friends. And to be able to kind of reflect on that path and that experience and what I've learned and really the, the small things that we can do in order to shift our relationship with money, shift our perception of money and really how we utilize it to support not just our business and pay our bills and do that, but really to make the impact in this world that we want to make. And when we're financially well and stable, we feel a lot more mentally, emotionally well as well, don't we? Oh, yeah. They, a lot of people say, you know, because money can't buy happiness. I'm like, no, but it's also going to relieve all of the stressors that are going to allow me to be happy. So <laughs> it certainly will. So yay. Cheers for financial wellness. Thank Love you it. again for making the time to be kind. I'm looking forward to introducing you to more people within our Kind Crew Plus as we continue to grow. I'm so excited to have 12 members in our Kind Crew. When we started, we had five. Now there's 12 incredible leaders who are making time to be kind on a monthly basis because it is important, just like Eileen said, to pay attention to you know your numbers. It's so important to pay attention to your mental health and wellness and your social wellness as well. As entrepreneurs, we do a lot of this work alone, right? And it can be lonely. And so in Kind Crew Plus, consider it your support group. <laughs> Once a month, we breathe, we handle our, our mental health and wellness, but we also connect with each other and find ways to exchange the currency of kindness and help one another grow. Join us. You can find the link to join our Kind Crew Plus at marleyq.com. And with that, all the links to connect with Eileen as well. Thank you again for making time to be kind. I'll see you real soon. Thank you so much for having me. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Eileen. Thank you for making this time to be kind with me today. Please visit marleyq.com forward slash this episode number for the links to connect and to join our Kind Crew Plus. Our membership community doesn't just include that monthly self-care date together. You also get access to a quarterly planning retreat. Once a quarter, we'll sit down and actually focus on your goals and what's important to you and making sure that you have the smartest plan of action to achieve that goal with less stress and in community. Right? You also get access to my online courses, including the best way to stress less, which is my self-care strategy. It's six videos under an hour micro course that you can start on today, right away when you join at marleyq.com. You also get access to my virtual events like the Mankind Summit throughout the year, my webinars, any virtual events that I do, my kind crew has VIP access, right? So join us. The first Friday of the month we meet, so you have time to register today. marleyq.com forward slash this episode number. Thanks again for making time to be kind with me today. I'll see you next time. Two.